Thanks. That's Life Song. They're uh, an, a ministry team, and you're going to hear a lot about ministry teams in just a second. But uh, I don't know how else to do this except to just do this. So I, I, uh, I'm sorry to be the one to have to share some sad news uh, with you this morning. But Larry Rogers, um, who is uh, a commuter from Olympia Fields, um, was killed in a car accident last night. Um, Many of you probably didn't know him because he was a commuter, he was a transfer student, but if you're in the School of Engineering, um, especially for seniors, you probably know who Larry was. He was a senior engineering major. So uh, I think it's appropriate for us today uh, to begin uh, by praying for, for his family. Um, his dad pastors a church in Olympia Fields and also for our School of Engineering. So would you... Um, Bow your heads and your hearts. And as I lead, um, would you also pray for Larry's family, their friends, um, and those of you that also know Larry as well. Let's pray. Father God, again, um, we recognize in moments like this that there's nothing that escapes you. There's nothing that's beyond your reach. Um, there's nothing that has to do with life as we face it that you don't tend to. And so we pray in this moment, this tragic moment, again for our community, that you would be close, especially with Larry's family, um, his parents, and his extended family as they mourn the loss um, of a son and a brother and a friend today. Be with the church that's impacted by this and our school of engineering and others that have known him, faculty, staff, and students as well that have known Larry uh, because of his involvement in our community. Um, he's family here. So our hearts are broken again today, and we ask you to tend to us. We ask you to give us strength. We ask you to sustain us, to give us words and discernment, to know how to respond to this uh, situation as you would. So give us your heart and your mind as we figure out how we're going to process this. We want you to know we love you. We're grateful that you're here with us in moments like this. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for praying. Um, this morning we do have a special day planned for you, the beginning of every year. We have what's called the Festival of Ministries. You saw ASC officers um, and ministries, uh, clubs, connected with ASC in um, our Ludwig foyer the last two days. Today and tomorrow, you're going to see Spiritual Life Ministries represented by these student leaders up here. You're going to hear from them in just a second. But this is a day when I want to ask you to consider building God's kingdom um, in this community while a student here at Olivet. You're going to hear about that. But let's stand this morning and sing as Life Song. One of our ministries leads us in worship this morning. You know, we look for ways for our light to shine in our world, and we also look for ways to appropriately respond to the need that's around us. Um, Samantha Davey works in my office with Jennifer McClellan to uh, facilitate this council of leaders um, that are here, and they're going to come up. We, we have two different types of ministries, um, one that is called outreach ministries, and those ministries are basically ministries that you could become a part of that serve the community that surrounds our campus. So some of our student leaders are here to tell you about outreach ministries and way you can become involved. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Elise. Together, we co-lead Best Buddies. So here at Best Buddies, our mission is to show God's love to adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities at the Shapiro Center in Kankakee. We do this by creating one-on-one -on -one friendships between Olivet students and our buddies at Shapiro. We are looking for students to join us on our mission to, de to develop integration and friendship with one of the most underrepresented and marginalized communities, not only in our area, but around the world. So whether you've worked with adults with developmental disabilities for all your life, or you're considering it for the first time, we need your help to show God's love and foster inclusion for this incredibly isolated community. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Jackie Clark. And I'm Nicole Sanservino, and we co-lead Compassionate Ministries. Compassionate is an outreach ministry here on campus where we seek to reach out to people by showing them the love of God through acts of service and through the conversations that we have with them. 
We seek to empower the community, the people we meet, with the tools and hope they need to benefit them in the long run. We hope you come to our table to find out more information, and we look forward to meeting you. My name is Nicole Gumas, and I'm the leader of Disciplers. Disciplers exist to serve the community of Pembroke, one of the poorest areas in the nation. We assist with an Awana program there to reach the youngest members of the community for Christ and show them the love of Jesus. We meet on Wednesday afternoons and would love to have you stop by our table to join God's work in Pembroke. Hi, I'm Katie, and this is Jake, and we lead Habitat for Humanity. Every Saturday, we help to build a home for a community in need, especially in the Kankakee area, through physical work. Basically, we get to share the love of Jesus by digging holes, using nail guns, and smashing things with sledgehammers. Uh, and you don't need any construction experience to volunteer, and we'd love for you to come out and join us. Hi, my name is Julia Swanson. Hi, I'm Jess Arzwaga, and we are the leaders of Life Support. Um, in John 14, 6, Jesus states he's the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, this ministry first stands for Jesus, who is the creator and the giver of life. The Ministry of Life Support serves and ministers at the local Pregnancy Resource Center through frequent volunteer and service efforts. Come and join our community of servants at heart who are passionate about being the hands and feet of Jesus within the pro-life ministry. Hi, I'm Rachel Hensley. I'm Vanessa Cohn, and we lead MCCR, which stands for Mentoring for College and Career Readiness. So as all of us students, we are just a 10-minute drive from Kankakee, which was recently the lowest scoring district in the state of Illinois outside of Chicago. So MCCR, we provide um, tutoring and mentoring programs for elementary, middle, and high school students at Kankakee. We hope to be the light of Christ by giving academic help and emotional support to help these students thrive. Hello, my name is Courtney McGee, and this is Ashley Ledbetter, and we lead Mission Possible. Our ministry reaches out to the men and women of Jerome Combs Attention Center in Kankakee, Illinois. We have students that go in five days a week um, to listen to, share, and talk with, build relationships with the men and women of Jerome Combs. Just as Ashley was saying, we have a very unique opportunity to go into a very dark place and share the gospel with a lot of men and women who've likely never heard it before. So it is our hope to bring this message and so that these men and women will eventually grow um, not only in faith but in community and prayer. And not only through this ministry will you be challenged, but you'll also have the opportunity to disciple others. So Ashley and I will be at our Ludwig table afterwards, and we'd love to see you there. Hi, I'm Evan. And I'm Angel. And we co-lead Save Our Streets. Our ministry reaches out to the homeless in the surrounding community. Together with our local outreach partners, we build relationships with our local brothers and sisters who are in need. We want to try to connect the Olivet community with our neighbors in Kankakee, Bradley, and Bourbon A uh, through awareness and action. If you're interested in learning more about uh, SOS, we'd love to meet you and see you. So stop by at our table in Ludwig. Hi, my name is Taylor. And my name is Katie. And we, and we co-lead Urban Children's Ministry. Our ministry reaches out to the children of the community Wednesday nights in the warming house through devotionals, silly games, and crafts. Many of our kids come from broken homes, so it is our goal each week that they feel loved by our volunteers when they leave, but more importantly, that they feel loved by our God. Well, we know there are a lot of needs um, off campus in our community, but there are also ways that we try to respond to needs right here on our campus, what we call in-reach ministries. So some of our in-reach leaders are going to come and share with us about those. I'm Todd Suter. And I'm Austin. <laughs> and I'm Austin Marshall. And we lead Fellowship of Christian Athletes, or FCA. FCA was founded for athletes, but we extend open arms and encourage intramural athletes and those interested in sports to join us as well. We meet Tuesday nights in the warming house, opening with games, a time of worship, and we end with a message followed by small group discussions. We really just want to create an authentic community for our athletes um, to not only support them on the field, but so we can also support them on a spiritual level as well. Please come visit our table in Ludwig. Hi, I'm Kara Lee, and I lead Heart for Missions. 
Um, come join us as we learn more about what it means to partner with our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, from across the world to our own backyards. Um, we want to partner with you um, as we pray for the people that you are already passionate about, the places that you love, um, the people who have already been called to missions, um, and just build that community around you that are just as passionate about serving the Lord and serving everyone else as you are. Hi, my name is Gabby Fowler. And I'm Allie Beecher, and we lead Heart Ministry. Our aim is to reach those who enjoy art to serve the Olivet community and its ministries through creative expression, devotionals, and art projects. We hope to explore our faith from an artistic perspective and through this to help our members and others um, learn more about their faith and become closer to Jesus. We hope to see you in Ludwig. Hi, I'm Palmer. And I'm Anna, and together we lead Prayer Warriors. <laughs> Uh, Prayer Warriors is an on-campus ministry where we're dedicated to serving Olivet through weekly intercessory prayer, authentic community, and campus outreach. So this year, we are believing that God wants to do a fresh thing and bring spiritual revival to our campus. Uh, we invite you to join us in the mission that God has for Prayer Warriors and the Olivet community. So please stop by our table in Ludwig today during Festival of Ministries to sign up and learn more about us. We would love to meet you and um, share with you the vision that God has put on our hearts. So We hope to see you there. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. My name's Esther Peck, and I'm your <laughs> VP of Spiritual Life this year. Um, the last ministry that I would like to introduce to you guys is Party with Jesus. Party with Jesus is a student-led night of worship where we have worship, prayer, and um, speaking. It gathers together weekly on Monday nights in the warming house, and I'd like to introduce our chaplains who will be helping lead that this year. Matthew Blackwell is serving as our senior class chaplain. And... <laughs> And Chad Radford is serving as our junior class chaplain. And Tommy Lambrick is serving as our sophomore class chaplain. And we don't have a freshman class chaplain yet, but they'll be elected probably in a couple of weeks. So, um, Chad, can you please come up and read our scripture? I'm going to be reading out of the book of Luke, and I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory. This is just after Jesus' temptation. Uh, can we please stand for the reading of the gospel? He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. <clears throat> Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Heavenly Father, for all that has been, we give you thanks. Lord, we know full well that your Holy Spirit is welcome here. We pray for your blessing, your anointing upon Esther this morning as she brings a good word from you. So in this hour, Lord, may you be glorified, for all the glory belongs to you. In the name of Christ, we pray, amen. Please welcome this morning your Vice President for Spiritual Life, Esther Peck. Welcome to Festival of Ministries Chapel. Um, we have been preparing for this day for a long time, and I don't know if you've seen all the signs outside that look kind of like this, but a little bigger um, in Ludwig. Uh, but today in Ludwig, we have for you a different table set up of all the different ministries. They'll be ready for you if you're interested in joining them or learning more about them. Also, at each table, we have these cards that have a list of each ministry and what they're about a little bit. So if you're interested, you can pick one up. Um, so this morning, can we just thank Lifesong for an incredible job of leading us in worship? Um, 
Um, Lifesong is a student-led traveling worship band. Um, they love to play music, and they love Jesus, so if you want to know who they are and what they do, you can check them out at the Ludwig table in Ludwig. <laughs> um, so I also want to thank one more person this morning. Um, without her, uh, none of this would even be possible. She always goes above and beyond, and her organizational skills are what uh, make all this happen. Um, could you please thank Ken- Kendall Singletary as our administrative assistant? Okay, how's everyone feeling this morning? Good. Okay, all right. Um, could everybody just please stand for a second and just tell the person next to you how happy you are to see them? Okay. <laughs> Okay, please take a seat now. (laughs) Uh, Okay, I hope that made everyone feel a little more comfortable because that made me feel a little more comfortable. Um, So uh, let's just be honest with one another this morning. How many people took about two hours to an hour to get ready this morning? Okay, there's some hands. (laughs) <laughs> How many people um, did it take about 30 minutes to get ready this morning? All right, I'm in that boat. Um, how many people did it take 10 minutes? Okay. All right, uh, the real question is, how many of you guys just rolled out of bed and walked over here to chapel? Okay, <laughs> there's some people here. Um, so whether we like to admit it or not, Um, image is very important to us. Um, Depending on however long we got ready this morning, whether we took an hour, two hours, or we rolled out of bed, we still care about our image, whatever that looks like. Um, This morning, uh, the message that I'm going to share with you guys today is the theme um, that our council will be going over this year, um, and it has to do with our image. Um, As Dr. Quanstrom says, because I go to college church, um, I'll tell you my message in one sentence. So if you fall asleep in chapel, which some people will, it happens, here it is in one sentence. Um, It's on the back of all of our t-shirts, and it says, image is everything. Okay, so um, this picture is a zoomed-in image of the fresco painting by Michelangelo, dubbed the creation of Adam, which is a part of the Sistine Chapel. Um, Michelangelo's creation of Adam is one of the most replicated religious paintings of all time alongside Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. Um, This image is, uh, this is the image of the near-touching hands, which has become iconic of what it means to be humanity. So, in Genesis 1, 26 to 27, it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The phrase imago Dei, which is also on our (laughs) t-shirts, Um, is the Latin uh, phrase for the image of God, which refers to a theological doctrine in the Christian faith stating that human beings are created in the image of God and in his likeness, as referenced in Genesis. Most of us have heard this before, right? The image of God. We were all created in this image, and therefore we are like God. The key words in Genesis 1, 26 to 27 that contributes to our understanding of the image of God are the words image and likeness, respectively, salem and demut in Hebrew, if some of you guys are in Hebrew. Um, While some of these words have been traditionally interpreted as to have two separate suggestions with image referring to a physical affinity with God and likeness as a reference to having the character of God, Genesis 1.26 is actually an instance of Hebrew parallelism, or in other words, there are simply two ways of saying the same thing. 
Salem, image derives from the word to cut or carve. In the ancient Near East culture, there were two different practices of this word image. One was understood as an idol, a physical object usually carved out of stone or wood that represented gods in the temple. The statues themselves were not gods, but they were there to remind you of the presence of God, of that God. Another way image was understood was in the matter of kings. Um, in the ancient Near East, kings carried the images of gods and were considered representative rulers of these gods. Many scholars draw a parallel between the image of God in Genesis and the images of God in the ancient world. Rulers could not be anywhere at once or everywhere at once, so they would make monuments or statues of themselves throughout the kingdom. These images would let everyone know that the king's rule extended wherever that image was found. Statues of kings and gods help us understand what it means for humans to be made in the image of God, that humans are placed in God's kingdom as his representatives. Unique to the Israelites, the role of image bearer was not only conferred to a line of kings, but also on a people. This was a striking notion in the ancient world. But unlike the image of earthly kings, the image of God is not a fixed image. Adam is God's special representative by nature and design. There are two reasons why God told the Israelites not to make images of gods, as in the commandments. The first was, unlike gods, Yahweh, God, is distinct from what he has made. He cannot be captured by a carved idol or of animals or any piece of creation. And secondly, God has already made an image of himself in humankind. By carving images to worship God, Israel would be making an alternate connection with God. The phrase, the image of God, is not necessarily about what makes us human, but it is about humanity's unique role in God's kingly representatives in his king creation. So what does that mean about us? Because I read all of that and tossed some Hebrew in there and tossed in some scholarly biblical studies. The first implication is that we are inherently valuable because we are made in an image of God who is beyond measure. That means you. Secondly, it is power used to nurture, enhance, empower for others' benefits, not to be used in our own will for our own selfish needs. God has established everything in our creation, and we are the entrusted caretakers. The language used in that passage in Genesis is a kingship language, a royal language. The kings of that time um, were held responsible to ensure that there was justice and righteousness in the community. Um, they oversaw the welfare of the people that they ruled over and made sure that everyone was taken care of. In the context of this creation narrative in Genesis, this puts into perspective what God meant by the verse, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over every living creature that moves on the ground. Hear me say this, we care about the earth because God cares. And for a lack of better term, littering and polluting are spiritual matters. Creation care is imperative to what it means to be image bearers of God. We have been entrusted with the welfare of creation and for the justice and righteousness in our world. While this part of creation seems to give all of us a wonderful sense of purpose and renewed excitement to be a part of God's creation, central to this understanding of who we are, however, is who we are not. The writer Nevada Barr said, after returning to the faith from the long sojourn on the wild side, it was a number of years of crashing and burning before I made the discovery that I was not God. The continuation of the creation narrative sharply cuts into a world where things are not what they should be. The fall of man reminds us that the grandiose symphony of creation is broken by death and destruction. Not only man, but all of creation groans with the violation of what was once created to be good. Although man is still the image bearer of God, the manner in which he reflects, relates, and represents his creator was distorted. The choice was to be self-sovereign, believing that the representative was greater than the one who had bestowed the authority, the liberty, and life itself, that creation was greater than the creator. The brokenness from sin was not just a symbolic loss, but a step away from shalom, peace, harmony, wholeness, and completeness with God. 
It is important to note that not only humanity, but all of creation is affected by sin. And it doesn't take much to realize that there's something very wrong with this world. But at the same time, there is so much beauty. We yearn to be fully alive and fully human, but the very fact that we yearn for this means that it is not an actuality. We want to be more than what we are, but are somehow less than what we should be. We feel less than fully human. In Colossians 1, 15 to 20, it says, Jesus, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him reconcile him to all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. In this passage, it says, Jesus spares the image of the invisible God, By Christ's resurrection, Jesus is the first to fully embody the image-bearing role on all humanity. The true image of God is only realized in the crucified and risen Son of God who is the true image-bearer. Through Christ, our humanity is restored. Salvation is holistic to acknowledge that there are many dimensions to living in harmony with God. In one sense, salvation is a legal transaction. However, for Christ, salvation was more than just that. It is a way of life. To be saved or redeemed is to enter into a totally new way of living in harmony with God, and this forgiveness also leads to restoration. God wants to make us into a people that we were originally created to be. It is not just the removal of what's been held against us. It is God pulling us into the people he had originally in mind when he made us. Our goal here isn't simply to not sin. Our purpose is to increase the shalom in this world. It's not about what you don't do. The point of becoming more and more like the kind of people God had in mind when we were created is why we're here. The climax of this story that we are all a part of, that all of humanity has come together in, is not that we are elevated creation, It is that in Christ we are redeemed and restored to fully what God has intended for us. The goal isn't escaping this world, but into making this world the kind of place that God can come to. And God is remaking us into the kind of people who can do this work. We are his creation in his image. Our humanness is not something to escape or conquer. We battle sin, but in winning that battle, we become truly human rather than something other than human. Quoted from Dr. Leth's A Holy Encounter. Our spiritual vocations and our earthly vocations are equally important. God does not attempt in Christ, as quoted by Dr. Leth, to free us from being human, but to free us to be truly human in his image. Back to that writer, Nevada Barr, when she said that she realized that she was not God. What she said after that was she realized that she was of God. So what does that mean for us now that we are image bearers of God? It means that we are called daily to live in such a way that embodies more and more what that image looks like. Jesus is both the cause of our renewed image and the model that we follow as we try to live that way. This brings us to a paradox that is central to how Christians see themselves as recreated in the image of God. Jesus has elevated humanity to his true image-bearing role, but his incarnation was an act of emptying himself of his divine right. Jesus humbled himself. The incarnation, the Son of Man being fully God and fully man, coming to earth and dying for our sins, was an act of humiliation. Pete N. says, For Christians, too, participating in the renewed image of God means following Christ in both his exaltation and humiliation. Simply put, we bear the renewed image of God daily as our lives conform to Jesus. 
It is suffice to say that there is something more to what Christ has done in his resurrection than just restoring the image of God. Christians are now full representatives of God in his creation, but not just in the ancient Near East sense of the Old Testament as a ruler or a representative. The emphasis has now moved to become inclusive, that Christians now represent God to all of creation through humility, love, and holiness. This is beyond what Genesis 1, 26, 27 was about in the original context. But what does Jesus do to the image of God in Genesis is what he can do everywhere else in the Old Testament that he does to our lives today. He transforms it, fills it beyond its limited meaning. The hope of creation is simply this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that through Christ he is making all things new, that we have been restored to his image and we participate in the invitation of the redemption of the world. We reclaim our humanity, the image of God, with the recognition of our worth and our identity in Christ. He is making all things new, and we have been restored to his image, and we participate in the invitation of the redemption of the world. So image is everything. This is the image that we cling to for hope of redemption. This is the image that reminds us of the love God has for us, and this is the image which we bear to usher in the kingdom of God here and now. This image is everything. So may I close with one last thought. A group of Pharisees came to Jesus to trap him with a question, like they usually did. They asked Jesus, is it okay to pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus said, bring me a coin. And so they did. And then Jesus asked, whose image is on this coin? They replied, Caesar's. So then Jesus said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God that which belongs to God. The question that the men didn't ask that morning, but if they had asked, and if we asked this morning, what belongs to God, Jesus would then have replied and would say to us now, whose image is on you? Would you pray with me? Father God, I thank you so much that you are a God of redemption and of restoration, God. I thank you that you have loved us so much that you would restore us to what you truly have us to be, that you would create beauty out of the dust. God, I pray that this message would remind us of who you are and who we are in you, that this would stream and trickle into our life daily here now. We praise you and we thank you for who you are. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you.